Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today I'm going to be showing you Bloodroot Forge. This is going to be on veteran difficulty. We're going to show the hard mode as well. I'm going to use the same setup as we always use with one stamina DPS, one magic DPS, one healer and one tank so that no rolls are left out. Here we go. Now in this particular dungeon there are lots and lots of ad pulls. It's the same kind of thing as every other dungeon guide that I've done so far. Make sure that your tank is kind of central if you can help it. Bring in all the melee stuff to you and of course then chain in the ranged. In the meantime the healers and DPS should pay very close attention to anything that needs interrupting. So ranged enemies like archers or healers or even mages, anything like that needs to be interrupted so the tank can then control the room and you don't get overwhelmed with extra AoE damage or nasty curses and all that kind of stuff. Or even arrow sprays occasionally from the archers. You have to be very careful of those, so just pay attention to those. Now, when we go up to this first stage here, you can see that there's a strangler. This is teaching you a mechanic for later. You have to get rid of these ASAP. If you don't get rid of them, they will... As you can see, I've got a poison dot on me. They will cast those ni nasty, nasty damage over time abilities and you will place them on the floor over and over and over and you will get overwhelmed with massive, massive AoEs of poison. They can be purged, so if your healer is on point and they can keep an eye on you if you've got that green glow or you're just communicating with your healers, they can get rid of it. But make sure that you don't run through the group too often with it and you have to keep moving. Otherwise, they will continuously drop underneath your feet and you will die. So keep out of those as much as possible. Always focus the stranglers. This pull here, very similar to the first one. Make sure that you keep all the melee stuff close to the tank, turn them away from the group as much as possible, and in the meantime, grab all the range stuff. Watch out for these mages, however, because they do put nasty ice across the floor and it can pin you on the spot, which then will have a domino effect because other stuff will hit you from behind or in front of you if you are pinned. Also, watch out for these uh, flame type guys. They're really, really nasty. Flames across the floor, you don't want to get caught in it. A couple of hits from those little AoEs will kill you, so be careful. Now, we're going to come up to the first boss in a second. This one is quite simple. But I do see a lot of pickup groups fail on this boss first off and they end up stuck here. This is because most of the time the tank is making the mistake. Now, this boss must be turned away from the group. If you're a disco dancer and you're running around left, right and center as a DPS or a healer and you're just standing in front of the boss all the time, it's going to be your own fault if you die. But it's on the tank to make sure that the boss is faced away from the group as much as possible. Now, as we beat on the boss and get his health down as fast as possible, because it's pretty much a stack and burn fest, during his uh, percentages of his health, 75 to start with, he will get a big wave of ads. These have to be controlled by the tank and killed by the DPS. Don't worry, they can be CC, they can be chained and all that good stuff. 50% he does it again. The faster you are with this, obviously the faster the waves are going to come in. But you've got to control the ads. Do not stand in the face of the boss. Do not stand in the face of the ads. And again, 25%, here comes another wave. It's constant. It's so, so busy if you have really high damage. If you don't, then you can pace this. But you mustn't stand in front of anything. And if the boss, as you saw then, is accidentally spun occasionally, make sure you dodge roll out of his attack so it doesn't kill you. As you can see, there was a strangler in the room as well there that we had to get rid of, which gave the tank and myself a nasty poison dot. But, as you can see, we had it purged, so be aware of that. If the strangler's in the room, as it will be, and it starts putting poison dots on people, you can purge it or cleanse it away. Again, key points, stay out of the boss's face. Even these little doggy things um, that we've got now that we're fighting, they were in the fight. If you do stand in front of them when they heavy attack you, they can knock you down. It's really, really nasty. This pull, again, as we said before, Focus the stranglers. If you were paying attention there, you can see that screw loose, one of our DPS, actually went to the left and I went to the right because there's two stranglers in the room. So we kill both of them first, then we focus everything else. And again, the tank needs to grab everything and center it in the middle of the room as much as possible. As you can see from where my, I was positioning, I'm keeping my dots down, I'm making sure I'm finishing stuff off, but I'm always standing behind stuff. So while the tank is trying to control things, don't run into the middle and let everything hit you in the face. Stay behind the enemies, let the tank make sure everything's turned away from the group and you should be just fine. The tank, however, should not be running around in circles trying to grab everything. You've got your own CC abilities, you've got your own chain abilities. There are other variations depending on what class you are to pull enemies in. Make sure that you plant your feet and pull things to you. Now, the next pull, again, is going to be very similar to the last one. There's lots and lots of ads. Tank should be in the middle pulling everything together. And, of course, you can see the DPS, the other DPS and myself have now split up to two different directions. I'm killing one strangler, he is killing the other. Now don't panic, if your group has relatively low DPS, you can all focus the same strangle and then move on to the next, but just be aware, again, the poison that you get stuck to you, the nasty damage over time, will place dots on the ground over and over and over, so you need to either kite them away until they're all gone, or get your healer to purge you to get rid of it. 
Also, you can actually dodge roll that ability. The strangler will spit at you, and that's what the poison comes from. You can dodge roll it if you're quick and if you're paying attention, but that's up to you. I mean, you can just stay in the heels if you want and then get that removed. It's, it's down to your group, whichever you're more comfortable with, or whatever you have available at the time. Not everybody has a purge, of course. Now, again, range stuff needs to come in. Make sure the tank chains it in and turns it away, but you will have to pay attention to interrupts and negative AoEs on the ground because they will wreck you, so be very, very careful and watch your feet. This next boss will come up to you. You can go left or right here. doesn't matter which way around the mountain you go. Um, you'll still come out the same way, but... This is a pug killer and a half. She is awful. I know Finn gets a kick out of this every time he sees groups wipe on it, but you need to get used to these mechanics. They're horrible. Now, it's a very clever fight, but it is punishing as shit. You need to make sure that you do as much damage to her as possible, of course, while she's standing still, and the tank needs to turn her away from the group. As you can see, there's some rather nasty single target and ground-based AoE type stuff going towards the tank, so always turn her away from the group. Now, 75%, she will actually go into her little trees mode and she will try and protect herself while getting loads of ads out. You do not want to be caught in those trees because if you are, you'll be flung backwards and stunned on the ground and these ads will destroy you. The tank needs to grab these ads as soon as possible and then turn them away from a group. Do not stand in front of that bear, it will kill you. Now, as you can see, she has focused me down now. She is constantly firing light attacks at me and constantly firing that nasty blizzard effect across the floor. That's because the tank taunt is off. She's immune. She can't be interacted with. Nothing's going to happen. She is now focusing me. She usually focuses the stamina DPS. So be careful. Watch your feet. If that touches you, you're dead. Now, she will go back into her next phase. She will do our nasty AoEs again. As you can see, our tank has got some distance and decided to turn her away from the group. So the blizzard is aiming at him. The frontal cone is aiming at him. The light attacks are aiming at him. Everything is fine. 50%, she goes back into her forest again, and now we've got adds again. Now we've got stranglers, they must die. Remember how important they are to kill, because otherwise we get nasty dots. Again, as you can see, the tank has grabbed all of the adds. We are nowhere near that horrible red forest. No one got stunned, and we are just fine. You've got to get out and get away from her. Turn those adds away, do not stand in their face. If you do get the bear on you and he's gonna uh, fire a heavy attack at you, just be very, very careful, time it and dodge roll out of it. The tank can block it, DPS most likely will not. It's very, very strong. Once the ads are down, she'll leave her trees after she's focusing me again, so watch your feet, and she'll teleport to somewhere else. Keep this up on repeat, over and over and over. Every time she teleports, do as much damage as you can, and then every time she gets her forest kind of effect up, you've got to get out as soon as possible. 30%, here she goes, she's doing it again. Get away from her. Kill the strangler, control the ads. Again, the taunt is going to run off, so although she's aiming at the tank now, once it falls, she's going to aim at me again. So I need to watch for that AoE on the ground and not stand in it. It helps if your group do not hug the person who is focused, so that they don't accidentally stand in it as well. You can see that I'm separate from the group, and I'm trying to keep my feet away from it so they don't get the negative effect. If I hug them, they're going to get it coming to their direction, and they're going to die anyway. As you can see, the tank just stood in front of it and took it off me, which is perfect. So be very, very careful. She teleports again. Also, pay attention to those stranglers, they must die, otherwise you get extra damage on you when you're fighting her, which is terrible. Now it's kind of a, a burn phase, just get her down as quick as you can. She can go back into the forest again if you don't kill her quick enough, but if that happens, just get out, rinse, repeat. Get out of the forest, kill the adds, back on the boss. Get out of the forest, kill the adds, back on the boss. Simple as that. But again, remember, once that taunt falls off, while she's in her little protective kind of garden, she will focus one person usually the stamina dps watch your feet don't get caught by that ice it's horrible make sure your healer is focusing on them as well so they can get rid of that nasty damage from the light attacks now we're going to see a few different enemies here the procedure is pretty much the same get all the ads in the middle keep an eye on the range stuff make sure you fire out interrupts and all that good stuff if, um, if something starts channeling as you can see there's an archer there we're nowhere near him if you've got a range interrupt of course do so if you can chain him in quick enough as a tank do so as well if not just get out of that conal effect and you won't get hit by the nasty damage that comes out of it and you won't get the damage over time on you either so just be very very careful with those they're not too stressful they don't hit too hard but you do want to stay out of the damage as much as possible to relieve some of the stress off the healer now, here comes the uh, the jumpy jump part. You have to go, obviously, from pad to pad and get to the other side. If you stand in the lava, you are going to take a serious amount of damage. I think a little bit later on in the dungeon, you'll see me do that. But um, there is an achievement. If nobody stands in the lava at all, um, you will get an achievement for it, which is a bit strange. And it relies on everybody being able to watch their feet. But there is something there for you to get. So if you want to go for that, make sure nobody stands in stupid. Now, these ads are very, very similar to the last ones. Very simple. Pull them into the middle, get all the range stuff in, and interrupt anything that needs to be interrupted. So if they're archers or mages or even healers, as you saw there, trying to heal, interrupt them if you can. 
Our tank chained it in, so that spell finished anyway, so it's fine. Chain in or interrupt, either one of the two will work. Now we've got another jumpy jump phase here. Don't stand on the pads for too long, because if you do, they will explode and you will die. And also, obviously, don't stand in the lava. If you do stand in the lava, of course, you'll take damage. But the longer you're in there, the more damage you will take uh, progressively. Very, very rapidly, actually. And you will be snared to hell, so it becomes even more difficult to get out. If you do get stuck, start jumping and start healing and try and get out as soon as possible. Now, we are now going to see some different enemies. We've got these horrible, horrible bulls. Now, these ones, the Earth Gore ones, are pretty rough. The tank needs to be very careful. You can see they did a heavy attack then. That heavy attack will put a volcano on the ground that the tank must stand on top of and hold block. Because it's constantly spluttering damage that will hit every member of the group and do stupid, stupid, stupid direct damage every single hit. Every time that target heavy attacks, the tank must block and stand basically in stupid. They have to stand on the volcano and block. Now, if you're a DPS, you can probably take like one or two ticks from it if you're blocking. Um, if you're a healer, you could probably last a little bit longer, but it really should be the tank. You are most likely going to die if you're not a tank. Now, these ad pulls are very, very simple. Just pull everything into the middle. You've seen it all before. We've got another Minotaur coming up right here. Again, turn it away from the group, and as soon as he heavy attacks, make sure you block and stand in that uh, horrible little volcano thing. Now, he does charge as well, like the tramplers in Fog Reef, so just be aware of that. As you can see that green AoE on the ground there, pumping out a nasty heavy attack, that's what the tank has to stand on and block. If you fail to do so, you're going to kill your group. So tanks, pay attention. Heavy attack means volcano on the ground, step on it. Now, these shulks here are quite nasty. They don't hit too hard, but they do have a really, really negative effect. If you get a shulk focusing you, you'll get a message across the bottom of the screen, which should come up in just a moment. As you can see, Screwloose has got one now, but you can't really see what's going on there. Once it happens, you will have to run away from their AoE and get rid of it. Now, the way to do this is if you jump onto one of those pads in the lava there while the AoE is chasing you, you can see that message underneath my screen there that is what you're looking for if you get that jump onto one of those pads and the aoe itself will follow you into the lava and disappear if you fail to do that it will hit you it will fire you up in the air and you will take really high damage over time about two ticks of it will kill you if you're lucky so do not fail that mechanic if you get the message from the shulk you do not want to hang around don't look at which one is focused and you just run like hell get on the pad and wait for that aoe to disappear in the lava and then come back in again it's very, very important that you do that. If you don't, you will die. Doesn't matter if you're a tank, DPS, or healer, you won't live through it. Very, very rarely you will live through it, in fact. If you've got an extremely good healer who is already aware that you've just been flung up into the air, you might just live, but it's very, very unlikely. Now, here, I stood in stupid. As you can see, I'm taking damage. I'm being healed as well, and you get more and more damage the longer you're in there. You've got to be really careful. Don't step in that shit. Now, this pool here, a Minotaur and loads and loads of ads. Focus the Minotaur, grab as many ads as you can as the tank and stack them on the Minotaur if you can help it. They've got a little bit of scat here, so you've got to be careful, but he must be killed quickly. He hits really, really hard. Keep him turned away from the group. If you don't, he's going to hit people in the face and he's going to kill them. He also heals off of nearby ads as well, so you've got to focus him down. The quicker you kill these, the better, but focus the Minotaur first. Just grab everything else in as much as you can. Watch out for that Fire Mage at the back, though. As you can see, he puts a nasty... Uh, line of fire across the ground you don't want to be caught in that if you can help it get your tank to chain stuff in and if any of them channel you need to interrupt them and kill them quickly now this boss teleports around the room like hell he has a few phases that are really really nasty but above all you must remember focus the ads these atronarchs here will get up during the fight and you must kill them we're going to explain that in just a second but basically stack and burn on him as much as you can to start with Get as much damage down as you can, and he will teleport. As you can see there, he, he will wake up one of the Atronarchs, and he will teleport across the room. The tank needs to be on point here, taunting both the Atronarch and the boss. Now, if they're both together, that's quite nice, because you can stack your damage down. But you must focus this Atronarch. If you don't kill it quick enough, it will put a nasty spread and AoE under your feet, very much like the last boss on Falkreef Hold, and it will follow you. Every single move that you make, it will put another one down on the ground. Or if you stand still, it will stack multiples. So you have to keep moving and get them down. As you just saw there, that was the phase I like to call the Space Invaders. Basically, lots and lots of tiny, tiny, tiny AoEs spreading from inside of him. And you must weave in and out to make sure they don't touch you. Depending on the colors, depends on how easy it is for you to see. For myself, I actually like the blue colors, but other people like other stuff. So make sure it's really, really bright so you can see it. Again, he teleported, killed the Atronarch. There's the Space Invaders mechanic, all those little AoEs across the ground. Weave in and out of them. Be very, very careful. As you see, I almost caught the one shot. You'll be really careful there. Um, again, every time he moves, if there's no Atronach alive, focus the boss. 
So in order, it's Atronarch, boss, Atronarch, boss, every single time. In the meantime, he does fire out some nasty AoEs on the ground, so just make sure you don't put your feet in those. During the fight, you will also get rooted as well. You'll get some kind of vines around your feet. If that happens, just dodge roll and you'll break out of it. Again, Atronarch first, boss second. While the Atronarch is being killed, you will get this Space Invaders mechanic again, so you've got to be very, very careful and keep your feet out of it. Now, when he gets very, very low health, you've got two options, depending on the capabilities of your group. You either nuke him where he is, if you've got enough damage to do so, which is what we did here, or if you don't have enough damage and you are worried, don't panic. Stick to the rules. Atronarch, boss. Atronarch, boss. Rinse, repeat. No matter how low his health is, if you're worried about it, make sure you kill the Atronarch, otherwise you will wipe. Now, this next pull is quite nasty, actually. There's a few enemies here that you need to dispatch really quickly, but there's also three Shalks in the middle of the room. Now, remember that effect I told you about where you get a message at the bottom of your screen and you have to get out? Well, that's now coming up. I've got the message. I need to jump onto one of these pads and look, there's the AoE. It dissolves in the ground, into the lava. Get that done ASAP, otherwise you will die. As soon as you see that message, even if a synergy pops up in front of it, that is focused on you. You've got to get out of the way. Now, these Minotaurs must be killed. It's the same as the one you met a moment ago on the last boss, but you have to make sure you interrupt it if he channels, because he will chain people down to the ground, and if they aren't let out quick enough, they will explode. There's a nasty AoE underneath their feet that will spread and spread and pop if they don't get out quick enough. Once you've interrupted the Minotaur, anyone who is chained must dodge roll out of those AoEs, otherwise they will continue to die afterwards, even though the effect is technically gone. Now, also the mages here, you can see, are causing a lot of problems. One of them's got that space invader mechanic with all the little tiny dots going across the floor. Keep out of that stuff. As you saw, I almost died there. You've got to be really, really careful. Watch your feet. Now, the next pull is quite straightforward, but we do have another Minotaur further down the road. So be very careful when you interact with him. Watch out for these fallen rocks. They do hurt. They won't necessarily kill you, but they give you some nasty damage. And once you're approaching this ad pull, you don't obviously want to be half health. So pull them all into the middle and burn them down as fast as possible with as much AoE as you've got. They are quite well centered anyway, so it shouldn't be too difficult of a pull. Now, there's a Minotaur here that you must focus. You know how to deal with these. He's a fire hide. He will chain people down to the ground. So you've got to make sure you interrupt him. Focus him down. He does heal off the adds. But if he does start that chain mechanic, you've got to bash him. If you don't, the two people that he pins will die. And sometimes that is the tank as well. So there's nothing you can do afterwards. There's no room for recovery. So make sure you interrupt him. As you can see, he chained the tank down then. I had to interrupt him and the tank had to get out of the AoE before it spreads and explodes. Very, very simple, but it happens really fast, so you've got to pay attention. Now, the next pull is actually quite evil. It doesn't matter how good your group is, this can wipe any anyone out there, and it does quite a lot. There are two Minotaurs this time, plus a load of adds. As soon as you start aggroing anything in the room, those Minotaurs will come in, so you've got to be really, really, really quick. I would highly recommend getting your tank to run straight to the back of the room and grab those two Minotaurs together. You've got both types here. So you've got one that if he does a heavy attack, he'll put the nasty uh, volcano on the ground that needs to be blocked on repeat. And also, we've got a fire hide who can chain the tank down. So if you get chained as a tank while the heavy attack is incoming from the other one, you are basically stuffed. So you've got to focus these down as fast as possible. Above all, you want to make sure you focus the fire hide rather than the earth gorer. But at the end of the day, if you get them killed, you get them killed. You need to make sure they die before the rest of the ads in the room. The rest of the ads are a bit of an annoyance. They can put out some nasty AoEs and stuff, but if your tank is really, really experienced, you can obviously pull them in as well while you're fighting the Minotaurs, but your main focus should be those two. Now, this is a pain in the ass. It is a very, very hard boss. It's simple in terms of mechanics because you've already seen them all, but you've got them all at once. So you have to be aware of what does what. His heavy attack is the same as the Earth Gora, and the Shulks are in the room as well, and the small Atronarchs are in the room as well. And you've got a big nasty AoE to deal with. So you have to be capable of focusing on each individual mechanic during the same fight. Now, what you need to do as the tank is obviously make sure you turn this boss away from the group, because you don't want them to get hit by it, because he hits like a fucking steam train. Now, Focus him as much as you can, do as much damage as you can, and you can see the heavy attack there just landed the volcano on the ground. The tank must be careful with that. When the Shalks appear, make sure you focus them and get rid of them as soon as possible, but someone will get focused by a Shalk, as you can see, I've been focused there. I need to run and jump onto one of these pads, wait for the AoE to appear, and fall into the lava. But, as you just saw there, Golshabar stuck his weapon in the ground and made a massive, massive AoE. So, you need to get out. Everyone must get on a pad when that phase happens. Then it's rinse repeat. Shalks and boss, big heavy attack, 
stay in the volcano if you're the tank and the block, and everything will be fine. He does do frontal AoEs as well, so you have to be careful. Shalk spawn, get him down. 50% or so, he will start waking up the Atronarchs. Be careful. Make sure you kill them. If you don't, nasty dots under your feet and everybody dies. Get them down as soon as possible. These are your primary focus, not the boss. Shalks will still chase you. You still need to get on platforms. But watch for his weapon throw, because once he sticks it into the ground, you'll see it in a moment. There'll be a massive, massive AoE. There it is. Get out. Wait for it to explode. Wait for the flames to be gone. Otherwise, you will die in one shot. I've jumped in there many times, getting ahead of myself and fried. So be careful. So basic mechanics for this are... Tank, watch for the heavy attack, block the volcano. Everybody else, focus the Shulks. When the Atronarchs come up, focus the Atronarchs. When all that is safe, you focus the boss. If a Shulk chases you, get rid of the AoE by jumping on a pad. If Golshabar puts his weapon in the ground, get out of the AoE by standing on the pad. Key points, by the way, do not have two people on the same pad because they are timed and they will explode based on the duration that you're on there. But the duration is counted per person. So if you have two people on it, it will disappear faster and you will die. Now at this point, it's basically rinse, repeat. If there's a Shalk, kill it. If there's an Ad for Atronarch, rather, kill it really fast. And the rest of the time, focus the boss. Keep your dots on him as much as you can while getting rid of those ads every time they wake up. The way to spot the Atronarchs, by the way, is you'll see some red uh, lights or red ball type effects come flying out of his head. And that's when he's waking one of them up, same as the last boss. Make sure your tank always blocks that heavy attack and stands in the volcano, otherwise you are screwed. As you can see, Shalk's on me again. I've got to get out, go and find a platform to stand on, and then get safe. That AoE will land in the lava, and I can come back in again. It's rinse, repeat. It is simple, but it is hectic as hell. You've got to focus. You don't have to have crazy DPS to be able to beat this fight. In fact, DPS is not necessarily a contributing factor. You don't have to have loads and loads of damage. There's no actual execute enrage mechanic as such but you do have to make sure that any damage you do have focus the adds you have to kill those atronarchs shalks can be alive for a while and you just have to be aware that if they focus you you have to get onto the pads but don't kill all the pads otherwise you're fucked when the the weapon goes in the ground it does a big aoe but you have to kill the atronarchs those are your primary uh targets there now more jumpy jumps don't stand the lava if you want the achievement be careful your whole team is responsible for this so if one person steps in it that's their fault um, I already wrecked the achievement earlier. Now, this Minotaur, you've seen them before. Very, very simple. Turn it away from the group. He will heavy attack. He will put a volcano on the ground, as he just did. The tank needs to stand in it. I know people have complained in the past about Red Mountain being the same um, visual and saying, oh, well, it's confusing for the tank. No, no, your tank just isn't very good. You have that volcano placed on your feet where he applies the heavy attack. So wherever he slams his weapon on the ground is where that is going to spawn. Plus, there's a big green light on it. It's very, very simple to see. That's the one you should be standing on. If anyone else in the group is using Red Mountain, it doesn't make any difference. Those volcanoes are random. They fly around the room. That one is always attached to his heavy attacks. Wherever it lands, that's where you should be standing. Now, this boss is pretty tricky. You've got three ads here, or three bosses, three mini bosses. Make sure you grab that bull, first of all, as the tank, because his AoEs and his ranged abilities and all that kind of stuff are very, very stubborn. He doesn't come to you when you get out of his range, like most ranged targets, straight away. He stands there and starts throwing shapes, which is annoying. So grab him and stand on his feet. Grab the melee and stand on his feet. And then range taunt the healer and run backwards so that she is out of the aggro, of the, out of the range of the person she's aggroed to. That way she'll come to you and you can kind of stack and burn them all. But you have to be aware that you must fire interrupts. As you can see, the healer's now coming in because the tank disappeared. The tank's now going to come back in again and they're all stacked nicely. That bull must die first. As you saw, he chained me to the ground then and had to be interrupted by the group. If you don't do that, people will die. The healer will cast nasty AoEs and nasty single target stuff at the tank and also cast heals, which you need to interrupt. And the melee guy will do a really, really big AoE and a little bit of a chain pull in as well. So you have to be careful of that. But your primary focus here again is the bull. Knock him down as soon as possible. Stay out of the AoEs and be heavy on those interrupts. If you do not interrupt the bull or the healer, you are pretty much stuffed. Again, the way to tank this, grab the melees together. So grab the, this guy here on top of the bull. Taunt the healer. Run backwards against that wall and she'll come to you. And then come back in again with everything and stack and burn them. It's quite simple, but if people don't pay attention to the interrupt mechanics, you are stuffed. Remember, interrupts were taught to you in the tutorial, so uh, hopefully you didn't take that as a quick time event and ignore it. 
bash stuff or have a skill that does interrupt for you, like Crush and Shock or something like that if you're a Magicka DPS. Pay full attention. Everyone can interrupt. Don't put it on the tank because the tank's probably the one that's pinned. Now, this boss can be very, very simple and it can be a complete nightmare. The tank needs to focus and the tank needs to get into the mentality that this is actually not that hard in terms of how hard the boss hits. His heavy attacks do hit hard, but the rest of them do not. I know he looks like a massive big behemoth, but he's actually not so bad. Visualize the axes in our Ferrian Archive. If you can tank three axes, you can tank this boss. Now, he will put his fist into the ground and fire a nasty fire AOE across the floor. As you can see, it's behind the tank right now. It's a spread and lava pool. Do not go anywhere near that. Every single one of these little bosses will put those on the ground every so often, and you must stay away from them. They are random in location. As you can see, I'm getting hit with fire. It's because I'm too close to it. Now, around 84, 85% maybe, he will actually go into his immune phase, start slamming the ground, and you can't do any damage to him. But damage shield around him, he can't be hit. But he will slam rocks from the ceiling, and you must stay out of these AoEs. Wiggle a bit, mind your feet, and don't get caught. Now, the tank, again, all you have to do is block that heavy attack and keep him away from the lava. The reason you want him away from the lava is obviously your DPS can be close to him, and you will get in trouble from those nasty pools if you get caught. Now, around the 80% mark, you will see him make a smaller version of himself. The whole health bar is now split between the two, so be very, very careful. The boss is now going to do heavy attacks and lava pulls, and the smaller one is going to do heavy attacks and lava pulls. So basically, you've got a duplication of what you're already fighting. So keep him still, don't panic. The tank needs to heavy attack between their heavies and keep their resources up, and make sure that you block the one heavy attack that each one does. Now at 50%, as you can see, we've now got a third boss. They're all exactly the same. They've obviously shared the health bar. One of them will go immune and drop rocks again from the ceiling. So watch your feet at this stage. Don't panic. They will all drop lava AoEs on the ground. You may need to move the bosses if it's close to you, but if not, you can just hug them in the corner. The tank needs to make sure all three are taunted at all times, and he blocks all three heavy attacks. If you can do that, you are fine. Control them. Now, focus the small one. Get him down as soon as possible because he has the lowest health. Then go on to kill the middle one because he has the next lowest health and then kill the original boss that you started with at the very beginning. Now, as you can see, we've got lots and lots of lava behind us, so we have to be very careful not to step near it because we'll get peppered in shots. We can't really go anywhere at the moment. We are pinned into the corner. The longer the fight goes on, the more lava you will get, so be very, very careful. As you can see here, the moon stage happened again. Loads of rocks coming from the ceiling. Make sure you stand in as many gaps as you possibly can without getting caught by it, otherwise you will die. Just focus your feet. Do not panic. As you can see, the tank hasn't dropped a single boss, constantly keeping those taunts up, constantly blocking those heavy attacks, and eventually when you get down to one boss, it's much, much easier. Every single boss has a heavy attack, every single boss has a lava phase where they fire it into the room. The less you have in the room, the less lava you're going to get. So focus those little adds as soon as possible. It's very, very important that you do this. Again, when the rocks come down, make sure you mind your feet. Now, the non-hard mode version of that is a lot less stressful because there are two synergies in the room. One either side of the room, one on the left, one on the right. One of them will actually get rid of a lava pool if you throw it at it, and the other will actually stop the boss from going into his immune phase and throwing rocks everywhere. If you can time that, you'll be just fine. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach this particular dungeon. It is very difficult. It is quite advanced. They were... Uh, a little bit harsh with this one on purpose because some of the most recent DLCs, especially the ones that are now coming as well, are deliberately made to force kind of veteran players into the harder stuff. Regular players can do the normal stuff. They can do the vet stuff, but it's deliberately difficult to make sure that you coordinate as a group and use all those mechanics you learned along the way. So, best of luck with it. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of the channel, there are some links in the info section or the description rather below the video for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zonodgaming.com where all the written guides are. And of course, there's a forum there as well. Little disclaimer, that forum is there for you. It's there for you to discuss the game and have some fun and all that kind of stuff. It's not an extended inbox for me, so don't send me loads of personal messages. I've got enough on here as it is. Anyway, thank you all very, very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.